everybody. Welcome to Dear Moby with Kat and Shy. That's Shy. That's Kat. Uh, Shy is a senior DevRel here at Docker. And Kat is our head of social media here at Docker. Yeah, that's right. And so Kat, are. Kat, I have a question for you. Um, yeah, I got a calendar invite uh, in my calendar that said I needed to show up to whatever this meeting is uh, wearing a nice shirt, which was a kind of a weird request for, for a Google Calendar invite. Yeah. What are we doing here? What's this meeting that you scheduled for me? <laughs> you know, I appreciate you not being weird about the request to wear a nice shirt. That's nice. And you did great. Uh, yeah, so this is our new show, Shy. We have a show now. Um, it's okay. Called Dear, yeah, it's called Dear Moby Ellipses with Cat and Shy. Okay. And basically, it's the like developer version of Dear Abby. So essentially, we're going to be sourcing questions from our users and our community about all things app development, Docker, just anything technical that they come up with. And we'll be sourcing questions and bringing them to you and also Moby to answer in our written advice column. So we have a web series, that's that's where we come in, and then we have a written column too. Okay, that sounds great. I'm assuming you already yeah. have some questions for, for me? I do, I do. I'm, I'm ready. If you're ready, you know, I I'm have ready. a question. Let's go right. into our first question then. Okay, so we have a couple questions today, Shai. The first one being something that I've seen in the comments on social. You know, I, I'm everywhere. I loiter <laughs> around. I see what people are talking about. And something that I've noticed um, is a lot of commentary around the difference between the command line and Docker Desktop for Linux, for example. Yeah. Um, kind of like kind of the benefits of, you know, utilizing Docker Desktop for Linux as opposed to just the command line, because both are great, obviously. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull my screen up and maybe we can take a look. So I've got Docker Desktop right here and uh, I'm with you. I love using the command line. I learned to code in the command line, um, but Docker Desktop is really is really useful too. I like having this like visual environment where I can see things. Uh, it's really easy to like select and like delete my containers, uh, which is really exciting. I can see what's running. I can look at logs. Um, and, and this is really nice. And you also get access to our newest feature for Docker Desktop, which is Docker Extensions, which I think means it's time for the extension of the week. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm pumped. I can't wait. Okay. Extension of the week. Kat, are you ready for my extension of the week? Yeah, I'm so ready. I wish I had like a drum set. I wish I had mm -hmm. some anticipatory <laughs> instrumentation to, 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 <laughs> to play, but I don't. I'm yep. ready. What is All it? right. So we've got a lot of extensions in our marketplace. As long as you're running the most recent recent version of Docker, you should have access to this. But this week, I'm going to call out the disk usage extension that was made by the Docker team. It lets you really easily see, you know, how many images you've got, how many containers you've got, how much volumes, and it lets you reclaim your space really easily. So in, in my container section, I've got some images and containers that are in use. So we've got, you know, a couple that are in use here. And so if I go ahead and use that disk usage uh, to clean it up, it'll get rid of all of those images that I'm not using. So I'm going to get um, my, um, well, leave the build cache. That's useful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. And we should get a bunch of hard drive space back. And I love having hard drive space because uh, I run out of it very quickly. So that uh, disk usage from, from the Docker team is our extension for the week. All right, Shai. So this question comes from our community Slack channel, another place where you, your, you, myself, your team, we're always in there. We're looking around, seeing what people are talking about. So this one comes from Mozzie, and he says, what is the best way of working with a virtual environment in Python such that the generated virtual environment folder in the container is also seen in the host file system? Got it. Okay. Um, do they, do you know if they want that in the command line or in Docker Compose? Actually, Mozzie was talking about Docker Compose. All right. I think I have you. And this, this is a good chance for us to do my tip of the week. All right. So, <laughs> so I've got my screen up, uh, and this week we're going to be talking about bind mounts. So bind mounts have been around since the early days of Docker. Um, you, you've been here longer than I have, Kat, so I imagine this is all, you know, old news to you. Uh, but bind mounts are really great. They let you map uh, a directory on your host machine or a file on your host machine to inside a container. So similar with the publish command or the port command, uh, where you map a, uh, 
port on your host machine to a port inside your container. Here we're kind of doing the same thing where we're mapping um, a location from your local machine to your container. And so the documentation page for that is right up on the Docker docs. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to use the bind mount with compose. And I can see that we've got this volume flag here and I'm going to use a slightly different syntax, but it's, it's functionally, this is what I'm about to do. And there's ways to do this in the command line as well, uh, by using these mounts or volumes, but we're going to do it in compose. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a project that I've been working on. So this is a flask server. So I think, uh, Mozzie was doing Python, right? Yes, that's correct. Python. So, so this is a Flask server. Uh, it runs on port 5000. It goes to the container on port 5000. It's a development environment, which is going to be important because that'll give us a lazy or a hot reloading. Um, and it's just a fairly simple, simple Flask app. Uh, and the only thing I need to do to change this to, to give it support for bind mount is I just need to put in a little bit of extra code. So here I'm going to do a new line and I'm going to tab back and we're going to do Ooh. not save it. We are not going to save it yet. Uh, we're going to do volume and we're not going to do it in caps. We're going to do volumes, right? And then we're going to get the next line and we're going to do where the code on my host machine is going to be. So where the thing I'm copying is going to be. So in this instance, it's a dot because it's going to be in this location because we're, we're going to be doing a Docker compose up. So it's going to start where we are, and then it's gonna be Flask. And that's because all of my code is inside this Flask directory right here on the side. And then we're gonna do a colon, and we're gonna map it to app. And the reason I'm doing app is because if we go into my Docker file inside of um, the Flask repo, you can see that I'm using this app folder as my work directory, and that's where all of the code is gonna get copied into when I do a Docker build. So by using this bind mount, instead of it copying all of the code in, it's gonna go ahead and just use this code instead on my local system. And that way, when I change something, it should in chain be detected uh, and, and be able to be in the change uh, up on my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a Docker compose up um, to go ahead and get this this whole thing running. Uh, and then we can make a change and we can see uh, what's going on. So I have Docker Compose up and this is a great excuse to take a look at Docker Desktop as well. Uh, and we can see, oh, that my, you know, it's, it's uh, running. Yep, it's running down here. So things are going. So it's been up for, for a little bit. So let me go back to my web browser. And this is gonna be on localhost 5000. And hopefully we get my website. Yep, here we go. So we've got my website. It's just loading. It'll give it a second. Um, and so, Kat, you know all about my board game league that I run in New York, and it's the space game and and, and that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But this is I my mean, little website. I mean, maybe another episode we can maybe dive another. deeper into <laughs> if, that. If anyone everyone. wants to know, that's a, maybe a good question to submit to yeah. Dear Moby. Um, but yeah, so here's my Twilight Imperium website. And I'm going to go ahead and change a very small thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the render template because that'll be a really fast change and it'll get picked up really quickly. So I can go to my templates. I can go into my front page if I can find it. Here we go. Index. And I'm going to change it from Twilight Imperium New York City to Twilight Imperium NYC. NYC. Save it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and we'll know that it's mapped to my local machine um because it'll update back to twilight imperium nyc so that's kind of how we got that um code that i've written locally on my machine running from inside the container and this is really nice if i'm doing you know development and i don't necessarily want to rebuild things every single time um you know i would if i added a new dependency i would rebuild but if i want to just you know work on my code really fast and get to take advantage of all the containers. Uh, this is a really good solution for it. Um, and I'm really happy because I, I hate setting up databases and I hate running databases. And that's something that, that I'm doing with Docker Compose uh, as well. And so Docker Compose is just managing the database for me. So I don't need to worry about spinning it up and down or any of that stuff. And, and I got the code for the database actually from Awesome Compose uh, as well. I stole my Compose templates from the Awesome Compose repo. There's a bunch of really great examples in here of excellent compose files and so you can find you know a postgres example and and go in and, and copy and paste it and you know make it work for you so that is my tip of the month is using bind mounts what do you think cat 
I think that's fantastic, Shai. I, I love your incorporation of Docker Compose into the example, just like Mozzie was requesting. Yep. Yeah, I think it's great. And Mozzie, let us know what you think of the answer. Give us your <laughs> thoughts. Like, put, let us know in the comments. Use the hashtag Dear Moby on social. Just let us yep. know what you think because we want to know if this helped you. But I, I don't know, Shai, it seemed helpful to me. So yeah, it was great. At the very <laughs> least, we should probably give Mozzie some swag. Oh. oh yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, yeah. If if a question of yours is chosen for Dear Moby, either the web series or the written column, we will be reaching out to you to hook you up with some swag. So be on the lookout. We'll find. We'll be finding you. Okay, Kat. Before we yeah. wrap up, we need to do the fun fact. Oh my gosh, I thought you'd never ask. Okay, Kat. I have to ask you. What is going on with your lower third? It says you're the queen of Nintendo 64's GoldenEye. I'm a PlayStation 1 gamer back in the day, so I have no idea what that's about. Well, you would be, and uh, Nintendo 64 is fantastic. Um, No shade to you over in the UK and your calm, sweet games. But yeah, everyone over here played Nintendo 64 growing up, and most people played this fantastic game called GoldenEye 007, and you basically got to like pick an avatar out of all these James Bond like universe characters, and you know go on these solo quests or you know do multiplayer where you basically try to kill your friends in different locations. And I thrive as Natalia with an RCP90. So maybe at a live show we can, when we have that one day, we can have, you know, a meet and greet where we play in 64. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is there a follow-up question, Shy? Because I can't wait to segue to your lower third. Well, I assume you would kick my butt at that live show, so I have no follow-up questions. So (laughs) I'm hoping you don't remember for our live show, if we have a live show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I would and I will, but before, you know, enough about that, let's talk about your lower third, which is all about how you burned yourself making homemade ice cream. We need to hear about that. Yeah, so salted caramel is very hot, and uh, when you make it, it involves taking sugar and putting some water and then bringing it up to about 245 degrees. And it's important that you stir it vigorously while you're making it. Uh, And uh, I maybe stirred it a little too vigorously once it got to the 245 degree point, uh, because I was trying to just get some of that residual sugar uh, that was still, you know, in its pre-caramel state to turn into caramel. Uh, And I maybe splashed a little bit on my fingers and then I maybe had to touch an ice cube for the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour. So uh, it's dangerous. <laughs> Be careful when you make when you make caramel, even if it is for, for ice cream. Um, I'm, you're spitting the knowledge <laughs> to us like all throughout the show. So thank you for telling telling our community, you know, how not to make <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> you know, wow. Speaking of, speaking of our community, do you want to tell us how they can submit questions and then we can we can maybe call it an episode? I would love that, Shai. So first of all, we're so excited about this show. We hope y'all are excited about this show. And we want to hear what questions you have, what feedback you have for us. So the best way to submit your questions are to go to our Dear Moby uh, page on our blog. And the link to that page is going to be down in the description. So you can just go there and fill out a simple form. You'll have to include your contact info so we can let you know if we pick your question, we can hook and you up with some swag. All more that. importantly, send you swag. Yeah, that's most important. You're going <laughs> to love the swag. We've been talking about this swag for months and um, it's going to be fantastic. So yeah. yeah, give us your good questions. And also just let us know in the comments, like, uh what you guys want to be called we want to create a name for you you know we're doc hands internally we refer to ourselves as doc hands but we want to have something for the viewers for you so that sounds like that sounds like a good set of instructions for for people after the episodes tell us your questions and tell us your your names but that's it for me i guess i will see you when you send me another uh calendar invite out of the blue yeah, you will. It's coming. So just be right. prepared. Iron right. your shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Until then, bye everyone. Okay. Bye.